Welcome back YouTube. Today on Peterson Auto, we're going to be building some suspension brackets to hold airbags. Uh, this is part of the dually build, so, you know, it's just the uh, same principles apply to any bag brackets or any suspension brackets you're going to make. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get started on things here. So, uh, we've got some holes to drill as you can see, and this is going to bolt to the frame of the dually build. So, uh, again, 88 F. 250 originally uh, fully been upgraded to uh, going to be upgraded to F350 specs. It's going to get a DT360 engine in it. The only thing left F250 is pretty much going to be the cab. But a DT360 engine, eating polar seven speed, heavy duty, uh, twin counter shaft, transmission, all that good stuff. So we're going to go ahead and make one of these brackets with this and this. So you can see already laid out all of my uh all my lines there with the square and i've taken my uh there you go that's focus good i've taken my uh spring loaded punch and punched the holes for where my drill bit will be drilling i'm gonna drill four one two three four there and over on the side it's a little dark but you can see one and two so we're gonna have six bolts holding this to the frame I, i'm pretty confident that's going to be about as strong as we're going to need so uh, i'm going to reset the camera and we're going to get drilling okay so after you have everything uh marked and set up you're going to want to drill your holes uh, we've already cut these to size uh, you can do that with the chop saw i uh, cut them a week or two ago so you know no video of that we're going to start drilling some holes here and we're going to get the uh, holes drilled for this start with a small bit i have no idea what size it is um we are going up to half an inch uh this is just a small bit i got we're going to just go right through and start our first pilot hole one thing you want to keep around is a little bit of cutting fluid i'm using this stuff here that uh, works pretty good comes in a spray can nice and easy so i just spray a little bit on it foams up which is nice keeps it from spraying all over you turn it on and then just drill away As you just saw this is some pretty thick stuff so we're going to drill the four other holes here get them all set up i'm gonna to have to reposition my workpiece to get that in a functional location and that's just a hair off So I have a, a block of wood under here supporting this piece. Uh, you can kind of see it there now. And I wasn't clamping straight. And in that process, we went ahead and made the clamp fall off a bit. But that's not a big deal as long as we catch it beforehand. So let's get this lined up again. Okay, right there's where we want to be. I can feel the drill bit is snagged into that little hole. Put the clamp on, make sure we're still lined up. Turn on the drill press. A little more cutting oil. There's some still on the bit, but you can see it was cut and dry. That cutting oil works great. Got it at the local uh, Joseph Fazio's uh, metal supply. And I go down there for pretty much all my steel because they're actually really nice people down there, believe it or not. Um, you know, they're always willing to help, always, you know, want to help you find what you need and all that good stuff. But uh, on top of all that, they're about the only ones around who are, uh, you know, worth their own weight as far as metal goes. I am uh, back, in, back in the woods and the, the boonies a little bit here. 
and it's kind of hard to find sheet metal and you know angle iron and stuff like that uh, until you really go and look hard and usually you're mostly going to tractor supply and whatnot well nothing wrong with stuff at tractor supply it's just obnoxiously expensive and then Fazio's there has a nice cutoff spin I go to a lot the cutoff spin has uh, anything that you know someone wanted in eight foot piece and they only sold it in 10 foot they didn't want the remainder that goes in the cutoff spin and they wind up selling that stuff for I think 65 cents a pound which ain't too bad so I usually pick up a lot of cutoffs for my smaller projects like these brackets because I don't need a whole 10 foot piece of this stuff Okay, so we got that drilled. Um, now we are gonna have to turn it over to the other side and see what we can get here. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and drill them all out to the small size and then drill them up one size and drill them up one size and drill them up one size. And oh, four and a half hours later, I'll finally have some holes in brackets. So uh, that being said, at this point in time, you get the gist of what I'm doing. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, keep recording, but we're just gonna fast forward through everything for you. And uh, that'll make it go a little quicker because, you know, it's like watching paint dry. Okay, YouTube, uh, I cut off the drill press video part of it. Um, you know, it just got to be a little bit long uh, drawing all them holes. So I'm going to grind a bevel into this bracket here where I want to weld the two pieces together. 
you can clearly see that's gonna go like that. And I'm gonna put a bevel on there. So I get a nice deep well that's gonna penetrate, you know, the whole way through without any problems. So uh, we got our angle grinder here. Uh, there we go, it's upside down on the label. Should be able to see that Ryobi brand. And we're just gonna put the bevel on. Um, safety first, yeah, let's go ahead and put some kind of clamp on this. I do even think that. So I just got a pair of vice grips. Put them over, adjust them up. There we go. And now we're gonna get our bevel started. see a nice bevel on each side where we're going to be welding and we take the bracket and put it up and see that gap we have created so that's our goal looks like any a little more on the sides because the brackets a little bigger than uh, I thought it was I'm gonna do that up quick and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get on to the welding part of things. So, we'll be back here in a minute. Okay, bear with the poor lighting here. Um, I actually have the workpiece turned the wrong way. But, uh, we go ahead and get this tacked together. So I'm gonna put a couple tacks on this just to get things started. Um, when you're welding, make sure you have a helmet. Make sure your arms and body isn't exposed. Uh, you should wear welding gloves. I don't. Um, I really don't just because I, I like to have that extra dexterity. So, that being said, weld at your own risk. I'm not responsible if you electrocute yourself or anything like that. Today we're using the uh, Lincoln, Lincoln Buzzbox welder here. I should get you a picture of that. Real good old Lincoln Buzz Box. We're going to be running some uh, 6013 rod, generic standard welding rod there, and uh, welding on a 150 you know, 150 amp setting. So we're going to see how this goes. This is uh, what I did on the other bracket. Turned out pretty well when I took my time. So you know that being said. Fire up the welder, get comfortable, make sure your cords aren't tangled, make sure you have room to work. You might want to take a practice pass. In this case, I'm just going to put a little tack on it just to hold it in place right now.
Okay, now I can remove my magnets, which just fell on the floor. And I can actually make a pass across here. And we're going to try to be as comfortable as possible in this process. Stop. Check how you're doing. Okay, we got some slag there, but she'll be fine. reposition In the process, you're going to be sinking a ton of heat into this piece of metal. So you may need to take a nice little break here and there. Uh, in this case, I'm just burning it in, and this is thick enough stuff that's not going to warp, it's not going to twist. Bottom's gonna probably be two passes, one from each angle. Okay, well that's welded up here now. Uh, we're gonna let this thing cool because it is hot, 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 hot. But uh, just to give you an idea, got a little bit of porosity in two or three spots there. We may clean that up and we re weld that. This is a suspension bracket. Uh, there you go, there's a nice, too high. There's a nice weld for you. Um, little uneven towards the edge. That's how the bracket was more than anything, I think. Um, either way, I'm gonna, not have any real issues with this. Uh, I'm gonna clean it up and we're gonna uh, get a picture of it here. Maybe a short little video in a little bit. 
Okay, YouTube, we've got our two brackets welded up here, uh, one I did previously, which would be this one, and this is the uh, fresh one today, still kind of hot. Got some pretty good welds on there, they're not perfect, there's a little porosity to them, I'll clean them up then, and maybe put another uh, another pass or two on there. Not just another pass, clean up, put another pass on. Uh, that's good weld on this other bracket here, but uh, either way, really, ooh, hot, 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 see how it's going to work. And uh, it's going to bolt to the frame with the angle iron. Here it's going to bolt to the frame and then the bracket's going to support the airbag. So it's a quick little uh, how to make up suspension brackets for you there. Um, you know, more weird projects like this are coming. Uh, hopefully I can get a decent video out of all the footage I got here. So we'll see how that goes. And uh, if there's again anything you uh, happen to want to see. You know, I got this whole project going here with the dolly that we'll be building a bunch of different pieces for it. Uh, we're going to be doing a custom fabricated three link rear suspension uh, along with air ride on all four corners. A custom fabricated three link front suspension. And uh, we're going to be fabricating the cross member. We're going to put the DT360 in there, a bunch of other things. So, again, keep tuned, keep watching, subscribe so you can get all the updates here at Peterson Auto.